as we look at this, privacy is dead in the world that we live in. So don't kill the messenger. Uh, and that genie's not going back in the bottle. It's just with a fully transparent world with all this wearable technology is that privacy is dead. And that's a major shift. Um, and you can turn on the news every morning. There's someone or some company that hasn't figured that out yet. And that's why we wrote the book, What Happens in Vegas Stays on YouTube, is that every morning there's something like that that occurs, both good and also both bad. So what we want to talk about here this morning, which you guys are already doing, the good thing is in a, a privacy-free world is that, again, it shows all the great work that you're doing. And people can spread the word a lot easier. So it's about producing your best and then protecting it. So produce it and protect it. All of us have what's called a digital stamp. So a digital stamp, we all have it as an individual, and we also have it as a business. And as we look at that digital stamp, it's comprised of two things. It's comprised of your digital footprint. And a lot of us have heard that term on CNN. Digital footprint's just anything that we upload online. So if you send an email, if you text something, if you take a photo, post it online, that's your digital footprint. So you have control over that. The more important piece, and is why online ratings and reviews are so important, is your digital shadow. That's what other people post about you online. So a lot of people I talk to is like, that's why I'm not even on the grid. I'm completely off the grid. Well, it doesn't matter. If you're off the grid, 92% of children under the age of two have a digital shadow, digital stamp, sorry. All of us have a digital stamp. And our businesses have a digital stamp as well. And so these are very powerful things. Again, we're doing things well. They're very powerful. They'll really help us out. And a huge part of your shadow, and more and more as it grows, is online ratings and reviews. So when we look at it, by show of hands, how many of you think that most reviews online are negative? Because people are just upset. They just get upset, they post maybe one review a week, or in their life, like that year. It's funny, actually, most reviews are positive online. But we take things so personal that when a negative review happens, that's all we can focus on, and that's just in our head. It's part of the way our brain functions. We don't have time to go into it. It's the way our brain functions. We just focus on someone said them something negative about our business or about us, but most reviews are actually positive. The other thing from the research that we've been doing for the last couple of years, because this stuff fascinates me, I'm trying to figure out like, how do you get more five-star ratings, is some of this stuff is intuitive when you look at it. I just want to see that the science actually plays this out and the research shows this, is that it's imperative to get out of the door early on your ratings and reviews in a positive way. And I get to test this real time because on Amazon, obviously, they review books. So it's imperative to get out with positive reviews early. Here's why. When someone goes in to give a review and they're upset, they're going to give you a two-star rating. If they go in and see that most people have given you a four-star rating, they're going to adjust their behavior. And actually, instead of giving you a two-star, they're going to give you a three-star. So you're influenced by what's already posted. Second, can, the other side of that is if they're going to go in and give you a five-star rating, and they see that everyone gave you a three-star rating, they're going to give you a four-star rating instead of that five-star rating they thought you deserved, because they're influenced by what's already posted. So that's why it's important to get out there and get out there early. And the beautiful thing is, we're just at the start of this. So we're at the beginning of this trend that's only going to grow. And so the beautiful thing is, is that there might be 30 reviews, 40 reviews, 50 reviews around your business, is we're right here at the beginning, so we have a chance to get it right from the beginning for the many years that are coming down. It's analogous to me, and history repeats itself digitally because no one listens the first time. It's analogous to me to when search engine optimization, you know, Google explodes almost two decades ago. Google explodes, bless you, explodes almost two decades ago, and everyone does paid search because that's easy, right? I can pay, I can see, did they come in, was it a lead? But the great companies said, what about this organic free search? That's 70% of what people click on in Google. How do we rank high for keywords in there? How do I rank high for furniture Nashville there? And they go, well, you got to do this, this, and that. And the owners of the business goes, I don't know what you're talking about, but if it gives us a chance a year from now, two years from now, to rank high for those keywords, then I'm in. 
So we're at another moment in time with these online ratings and reviews, just like Google with organic search to show up high for the term furniture Nashville. We're at the beginning of that stage to get it right from the beginning. So it's a, it's a huge moment. The third thing that's interesting is that I want to figure out, can you incent people to give you a rating? Even if you said, hey, give us a one to five star rating, but here, if you do it, then we'll give you a 20% off. Even if you give, a, give us a one star. What we found is it's interesting, because you'd think intuitively, OK, we're already getting a decent amount of ratings. This is one of my best customers, Jill. If I give her an incentive to rate us, then we'll get more ratings and reviews. Most of the time when you provide that incentive, you've got to test this. It doesn't hold true across the board. But when you give that incentive, it actually de-incentivizes your best customers. They wanted to give you that online rating review just because of the goodness of their heart. So you've got to be careful if you go down that path. Now, it's interesting. When I saw that research, I go, well, let's test it for, for my book. Let's just figure it out. So we had a book, What Happens on Campus, stays on YouTube that a lot of universities use. So we tested it at the University of Oregon. So I had a student there. I go, OK, I want you to do this. I want you to take these $5. I want you to just print out. If you give us an online rating review for the book, because we know you're reading it in your class, it doesn't matter. If you think the book stinks, give us a one star. Or if you think it's great, give us a five star. But if you do that, we're going to give you a $5 Starbucks gift card. So she puts these on everyone's desk. Hardly anyone does a review. So we're like, OK, that's interesting. That didn't change the behavior. So we go, well, why don't we just give them the, the card from the beginning and say, we're giving you this $5 gift card. Here's your $5 gift card on your desk. We assume you're going to go on and thank you for your review, whether it's a one star or five star. Here's your $5 in advance, your $5 Starbucks. A couple more people did it. But then when we said, OK, how many students are in the class? There's 150 students. We go, all right, here's your chance to get something for free by getting an F. 150, if 75% of you do a review, I mean, sorry, 75 of you, 50% do a review, then the whole class gets pizza. All of a sudden, we get 90 reviews because it's a team effort. It's more of a collaboration together. So again, it's kind of showing the point that most people want to do something good for you, whether it's a team effort or whether they just like you or they like your business. So just be careful with incentives on how you go about doing that. When I went into the research, I thought the most important factor when we talk about the so one beautiful thing about social media is that it kind of helps to get rid of these fake reviews. Because more and more, you actually have your picture. You have to have an account. So more and more, it's harder to do a fake review. They still exist, but it's harder. And that's why I love, one of the reasons I really love social media is it allows for that. You have to have a picture. You have to have an account. So harder to do a fake review. Still happens. But I thought that the number one most important factor when I read a review on whether I'm going to trust it or not is if I personally know that person. So I can see, oh yeah, I'm, touched, I'm tied to that person on Facebook. I actually know them. Or actually, I know them because I know I live right next door to them. They're, they're the, that's the most important factor. It's actually not. It's the second most important factor. Because I guess some of our friends probably have bad taste, right? You have that friend that you'd never trust their recommendation when it comes to restaurants. The number one factor is if it's verified or not. If the review is verified, are you a verified buyer? So that's the number one factor on trust when it comes to reviews.